Meet Mopsy, a three-month-old kitten with a nasty-looking infection. Mopsy is the victim of cat flu, which she caught because she hasn't been vaccinated. Not only could she lose her eye, she could die. Yeah, I think it's fairly certain that that's what's happened mm. and that the cat flu virus has settled into that eye and really badly damaged it. To be honest, this eye looks beyond anything that can be sorted out. But animal ally Dr Jessica Gower is hopefully not only going to save her life, but save her sight as well. She doesn't so seem, apart from her nose and the nasal discharge and this dreadful eye, she seems completely her normal self. She's not gone off what's, otherwise. Yeah, what's going to happen about the eye? We'll have a look at that in a minute. I think, to be honest, you're going to lose this eye. It, it, it's not something that's just suddenly happened. It's been coming on to look at it for a little, a little while, and it's a very, very badly damaged mm. eye. Do you want your mum and dad to come in for us to have a talk about it? Yeah, I think I'm better. Shall I get them? Yeah, do you want to do that? Okay, I'm going to give her a shot of antibiotics, and um, we'll a bit of antibiotic ointment in both eyes. Um, it's too late, late to help the ruptured eyeball, but I just... At three months old, Mopsy lives with her owner, Laura Mawson, in a terraced house in south-east London. To anyone else, she may appear just another cat, but to Laura, she's very special. But it takes more than just being an animal lover when owning and caring for a pet. ...the check-up, because, I mean, you've been good owners, but you haven't spotted the eyes. After about 15 minutes, Dr. Jessica is concerned that Mopsy's condition is very serious. She needs to operate and prepares the consent forms. Laura signs them, but she's still upset that she didn't notice Mopsy's condition earlier. Uh, devastated. Didn't realise that we had to have brought her in earlier. Um, lucky that she's going to be able to save the other one. Dr. Jessica is also worried that Mopsy might have the cat equivalent of the HIV virus, known as FIV. If Mopsy's test is positive, she may have to be put down. So, after Laura says her farewell, Dr. Jessica takes Mopsy to the isolation ward. She fears the kitten could still be contagious, and the last thing she wants is the cat flu to spread. The night shift vets at the Blue Cross Animal Hospital treat all kinds of emergencies. Benji is just one of 26,000 animals seen every year, and they're not all fans of the doctors. Michael is worried that his terrier has a reoccurrence of a spinal injury. But before examining his leg properly, Dr. Jessica wants to see the dog in action. Benji is clearly limping. Dr. Jessica's next task is to go and check on Mopsy, who is in isolation. This is a germ-free zone where the hospital keeps animals with infectious diseases, and Mopsy's cat flu is highly contagious. Mopsy is settled and oblivious to the operation that will take place in less than 12 hours. The next day, Dr. Jessica's team make Mopsy's operation their top priority. They carefully prepare for the complicated eye removal. Such a big operation is always a risk because Mopsy could react badly to the anaesthetic. 
Other complications could also arise. Um, we've anaesthetised Mopsy using all the same agents we would use really if it were a human baby. Do you know, I think I would clean. I think I would clean that just with saline. Um, the kitten is in a bad way and it's a shame because it's just really unnecessary. She just needs to have had a vaccinated mother and to have been vaccinated. Um, and I mean, cat flu is a traditional killer of cats, particularly kittens. The Blue Cross Hospital is a charity which provides an essential service for people who have nowhere else to take their pets. It's open 24 hours a day. There's no charge for treatment here. The hospital merely asks for a donation and the huge team of medical staff and state-of-the-art equipment makes them one of London's greatest animal allies. But this nurse's immediate concern is preparing for the operation. Motsi is now ready to go into the theater. In Animal Doctors Part 2, Motsi's operation continues. Back at the Blue Cross Hospital, Dr. Jessica Gower begins the gruelling operation to save Mopsy the kitten. The inside Mopsy's eye has to be left intact, and the blood vessel has to heal properly and remain infection-free. Before Mopsy's eye is removed, there's some complicated stitching to do around the kitten's eyeball. I think an important thing about animals is that they feel pain in exactly the same way that humans feel pain and that's why you know, use of painkillers and just kindness to animals is as vital as kindness to people or children. But the good thing about being an animal is that you don't have the same fears or worries that a human would have. So this kitten will be entirely unconcerned that it only has one eye. It's finally the moment when Mopsy's infected eyeball is ready to be removed. Dr. Jessica sews Mopsy's right eyelid together. Mopsy is now ready to go back into isolation where she will slowly wake up. She looks as though she's recovered well. She's doing fine. She's come around very, very quickly. She's bright. She's purring. Um, and whereas yesterday her purring was very anxious, I actually, she, she sounds to me like she's welfare-wise. She looks quite. She looks quite reasonable for a kitten that's had an op this morning. She's relaxed. She's actually pawing with her feet. I think partly it's because of the opiate painkiller she's on. I think she's actually relaxed and purring. Aren't you? Mopsy's FIV tests have come back negative, and now Dr. Jessica's last task is to let her owners hear the good news. Hello, I'm sorry you're not in. It's Jess Gower from the Blue Cross ringing about Mopsy. I'm just ringing to let you know that Mopsy is doing fine. She was very good under her anaesthetic. She had an uneventful enucleation of her eye. She recovered. Her in the next programme, the new world of animal allies continues when the rare Thai tiger makes a special appearance. And animal ally and writer Carla Lane opens up her extraordinary animal sanctuary. There are ways to make a difference.